Yeah, well, I, I was born in London, um, but I've lived in the Netherlands for the past 40 years. So, and I've got both the English and the, the Dutch nationality. I'm trying to explain to people how to, uh, to, to, to sell the value of DevOps to business executives, because business people don't understand IT. We've got the speaker notes up here. I think they're useful for me, but not for the audience. <laughs> yeah, by the way, being both British and Dutch is quite interesting because you probably know English people are too polite to be honest, but Dutch people are too honest to be polite. So I'm very confused. Anyway, great to be here. Thanks very much. It's, you, we've, we've been having a great day, at least I have. Really cool conference. I bet this is a, the best DevOps conference in Vilnius this week, <laughs> at least. <laughs> right, okay, thanks. I've just listed my current interests here. If anybody's interested in the digital enterprise business models, value and stuff like that, please get in touch. Always interested in, uh, in developing a dialogue about stuff. I'll be touching on a couple of these topics in, in this talk. But I, at DevOps conferences, I always feel like a bit of an imposter because you actually do the stuff, whereas I, as I call myself, as you might have noticed, the IT paradigmologist the paradigmologist, I study IT paradigms. I'm a, sort of a, a trend watcher, commentator, observer of things. And I think the, in the f I'm celebrating my 40th year in IT now, and I think the DevOps paradigm is really the most significant thing I've come across. And I hope that the perspectives that I, as a relative outsider, can share with you will, um, will give you some, possibly some new insights. So let's, what I'd like to do is just before I start off on the talk, the talk proper, just summarize the day. Serious shit, right? We, um, and we started, we started off with Martin, I, I'm just giving a, this is my personal summary of, of what I picked up during the seven of the talks that I attended. Martin talked about the professional as opposed to the amateur, emphasized principles and values, and I think professional values, in particular, pride. Are you proud as a professional? Really powerful message there. Eve's talked about com the complexity and diversity in, com in enterprise environments. It's quite a challenge. Jeff brought in the factor of economics. Look at the money. And the human factor, you're dealing with people, real human beings. You've got to, you know, you've got to, got to treat people like hu human beings in order to, um, to get things working. Anton spoke about change, the fear of change, difficulty of change. Mikko talked about adopting and adapting multiple approaches to solve things. There's no single bullet that'll solve your problems. Got to look at various, uh, various options. Carlos... Um, you stole one from Mark, from Mark a ment mentality you emphasized towards the end of, your, end of the talk the importance of recognizing the kind of culture that you work in. Then finally, Alex talked about effectiveness and efficiency, preferring to focus, and I agree with him totally, preferring to focus on, on effectiveness. So that's, that's my little summary of, um, of today. The summary of my talk, DevOps is useless. Unless seen in a bigger picture, and particularly in close co-creational, important word, collaboration with the business. You co-create value together with the business. And three important concepts there. Now this is, uh, the, and just for the timekeepers, this is the, uh, the approximate timing of the, of the talk. So I hope I'm going to keep on track. This is, uh, especially for the German in the audience, We're punctual. We've got to get this right. Dealing with four, four topics, selling the concept, the value of DevOps to business executives, trying to translate the great stuff that we do in terms that they understand. 
putting DevOps in a bigger picture, the theory of constraints. You might be working on DevOps, yet your weakest link might be in another area. So are you spending your, your, your time and money on the right thing? A topic, third topic, fascinates me enormously. Behavior, what drives behavior, and the often difficult relationship between business people and IT people. I go into that in a lot more depth in workshops, and I, I'll share the results with you if we have time. And finally, on a very personal note, going back to your, your own core values, putting a bit of fun into, um, into what we do. So let's, let's start with, with selling DevOps to, to business executives. Who's, um, who's seen the film, Wolf of Wall Street? Yeah, a fair number of people. Remember, the, remember that, uh, that clip, sell, sell Me This Pen? I'm tr trying to work a little analogy into selling this DevOps. So let's, uh, let's take a quick look. Two scenes. One is this is a sales training where the guy is trying to get amateurs to sell a pen. And the, the second clip, which is a very brief one, is how professionals do it, seasoned salesmen. Sell me this pen. It's it's a, a amazing pen. It's a for professionals. It's a sell me this pen. Well, it's a nice pen. You can you can use the pen to write down thoughts from your life so you can remember. Sell me this pen. Well, this pen works, and I personally love this pen. And I this pen. The there you go. I can sell anything. That's the attitude. You can sell anything. Can sell, sell, anything. sell me this fucking pen right here. You can sell anything. Sell that. Go ahead. Sell me that pen. Can I finish eating first? I need it tonight. Brad, show them how it's done. Boom. Sell me that pen. Watch. Go on. Let me sell this fucking pen. That's my boy right there. This pen. Fucking right. sell anything. Why'd you do me a favor? Why'd you name down that napkin for me? I don't have a pen. Exactly. Supply and demand, my friend. You know what I'm saying? Shit. It's creating urgency. Oh Getting them to want to buy the stuff. Convince them it's something that they need. You know, you know what I mean? And that's the thing. All nuns are lesbians. <laughs> fuck the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't resist leaving, leaving that last bit in. But you see the difference, don't you? The, the amateurs are focusing on the features, on the SLAs, on the availability, on the performance, whereas, you know, that's, that's not what business executives are, are interested in. So I realized we, we could have used Dil Dilbert and the pointy-haired boss for this one, but here you've got a, got a business executive and, um, and one of us. Really, in, yeah, one of us, really enthusiastic about this DevOps stuff is amazing. So, you know, the pointy-haired... Boss says, and why should we invest in this DevOps as opposed into other resources, other things? Then you come up with things like continuous containers, immutable microservices, comms as code. Let's start inventing this, you know, the t techno babble, drivel. <laughs> come, come back when you, when you can speak MBA. So let's, um, a very quick... I would love to go into this in, in a lot more depth. I, I'll give you a link to, uh, to a bit more detail here, but I've got a little framework where you can see on the left-hand side the stuff that we learn at conferences like these. We come to learn about approaches, models, principles, practices that we could adopt in our own IT function, the IT department, which would give us better, faster, and cheaper information systems, which would help the lines of business to do better stuff and achieve their business goals. And the business goals, more sales, higher prices, lower cost, operational cost, operational expenditure, OPEX, and capital expenditure, you, know, you, you want to borrow as little money as possible from the bank, little capital as possible. So lower costs and, of course, lower risks. These are the things that business people are interested in. Now, it's, it's interesting that the definition of DevOps is, is a pretty tricky one, but I'm, I'm 
very fond, and in the rest of the talk, I'll be having this in mind, Gene Kim's definition of DevOps as the set of cultural norms, technical practices, and architecture that enable organizations to have both a fast flow of work through development, testing, deployment, while at the same time maintaining world-class availability, reliability, performance, security, things like that. And you'll also see those reflected in the fairly new DevOps handbook. Out of interest, who's, who's got the Dev, DevOps handbook? Yeah, okay, not many, so less than 10%. It's, if you look at the pedigree of the authors of that book, that really is, I, I think, an excellent source of, source of guidance. Two other sources which I think you should take uh, take very seriously, the, the annual State of DevOps report, which has, I think, been around for th three, four, five years now, and the more recent uh, DORA research, which focuses more on value. And what I'd like to do is just like, this quick little exercise on how do we translate the, uh, the way DevOps is expressed here in terms of IT performance and IT costs, into the, the kind of values, the kind of terms the business executives like to hear. More sales, higher prices, lower cost. Let's take them in, uh, in a couple of steps. If we look at mean time to, to recover and change uh, failure rate, I would express those in, in terms of fewer costly disruptions to business operations. Because you know, this, this is about the operational characteristics of information systems. If they fail less frequently, and if your recovery time is quicker, you can have fewer disruptions to business operations. This is the kind of language that business executives like to hear. And you could also use terminology like, this will lower your risk profile. Look at the next two in, IT, in the IT performance section the deployment frequency and the lead time to change, I'd translate that in terms like quicker time to market. So whatever you're doing with the functionality and your information systems, you get it shipped quicker to, to the business so that they can reduce business operations costs or introduce new sales channels or improve customer satisfaction more quickly. It's about the speed of change. Looking at the IT costs, I'm going to take them one by one. Less rework, I'd relate to, um, to quicker time to market, because you, if you don't need to rework stuff, you get it shipped quicker. Fewer outages, about f fewer disruptions to business operations. And, more sig and it, although it will probably lower the IT costs, when you think that IT costs are usually a small percentage of the total enterprise costs, you can ask, question, your que ask yourself the question whether that's really significant. Just going to ask for, for somebody to, to offer their opinion. On average, what percentage of the total enterprise costs are IT costs, do you think, including, including staff? Ten, yeah. Varies between two and thirty percent, according to a professor who's, who's done lots of research. If you're a company like Shell with oil tankers and oil rigs and stuff like that, very costly stuff, IT is just one or two percent. If you're in the financial tech industry, then you're going twenty, twenty-five, thirty percent. So it, a, it does depend. On average, ten, twelve percent wouldn't be bad. So relate. Relate your IT, realize that your IT costs are just a fraction of the total cost. If you're achieving fewer outages, the cost savings through fewer business disruptions, that will be much more significant than the reduction of, of, um, of IT costs. Now, finally, in this section, better staff retention, happier people. Now, that's going to have its effect across the whole board. If you've got happy people, they're going to do everything better. So if, you, if we return to this, um, return to the, the, the pointy-haired uh, boss, you again. So why should we invest in DevOps instead of in other things? 
this is the kind of terminology I think that you should, you should be using. Quicker time to market, fewer costly disruptions, lower risk profile. And I'd... Um, and now you're, you know, you're, speaking, you're speaking his kind of language. If you're interested in the detail behind the, the dependencies be, behind those, uh, those, those five columns that I showed you, um, look at my stuff. So in summary, this part, the first part, summarizing. The next parts are a lot shorter. Uh, don't mention IT. Talk in terms of benefits, costs, and risks. That's the... Um, that's the main message here, and that's a link to, uh, link to a blog that I've done uh, on this topic. The next one is putting DevOps in a bigger context, a bigger picture, and using the concept of a theory. Are we on track? Time? Should have um, 15 minutes, 10 minutes? Around 15, okay, they're doing well, yeah. Putting it in, in, the, in, in the bigger picture, and understanding whether it's prudent, whether it's wise to invest a lot in DevOps if your weakest link is elsewhere. And this is what I, I, I've called it a DevOps paradox. Uh, despite DevOps referring to the theory of constraints, have a look in the, um, in the DevOps handbook for the references there, DevOps is just part of an IT value chain. And you know, be, be aware of where your weakest link is. Who's read the goal? Yeah, so maybe about 10%. Yeah, really fascinating book. I started reading it in the afternoon and finished up at 2 o'clock in the morning. A really, really compelling, compelling book. And um, Goldrat is probably the, the, one of the names that's very strongly associated with the theory of constraints. The basic premise is that any system is constrained by, is, is limited by just a few constraints, a few weakest links. And you've got to identify the goal that you want to reach. Where's your weakest link? Uh, strengthen that link so you, in, you improve the, the flow through that part, so we improve the, the throughput through the whole system. That's the so look, thing is, look for the weakest link. Now I've put DevOps here in a very simplistic value chain and I've given DevOps a prequel by talking about requirements and a sequel talking about use of information systems. And you've got to realize, of course, it's only when information systems are actually used that the value gets realized. So that's the important part in the value chain, possibly the most important part. I like to see Agile as overarching requirements and development and ending, if you use the Scrum terminology, with potentially shippable, shippable increments. Um, but I realized recently, be because the potentially shippable software increments are output, I, li I like to call them excrements rather than increments. I like to introduce this new terminology. Because the excrements have to be shipped into production. Yeah, we're back to that serious shit theme, I, I think. Yeah, sorry about that. It's the, uh, I, th I think it's the English side of me, the, the toilet humor that appeals to me. Stick DevOps underneath DevOps, of course. I think it falls short in covering all of Ops. I think it's more DevOps, to be honest. If, certainly if you look at the technical practices in the DevOps handbook, I've made a study of the 67 technical practices. It's interesting to do that. I've, I've written a blog on that as well. The, the, the scope of DevOps according to the handbook is much more limited than I expected. Take a look at that. What I think certainly needs to be addressed is support both function, sorry, both technical, how you use a system, what do the keys do, what do the, the functions do, and f the functional support, how is an information system used in the business context? If you have to, uh, if, if you have to write, you, 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 you t um, have to record the time that you work, the question whether you record your time on the first day of the next month or in the first week of the next month, those kind of questions, that's, that's the business context. 
Just to go into that, uh, that theory of constraints in a little bit more detail, let's look at the business side and the IT side and see, see what's going on, not only in the IT department, but in the business department as well. In the business, how much should we be spending on IT as opposed to other things? 10%, 20%, what's the right percentage? What kind of investment should we be, be making? How do we delegate work to those awkward IT people? who then start to design, develop, and test stuff, while at the same time the business is doing organizational change to prepare the organization for the new functionality. Acceptance, deployment, transition in the user organization, and then operation. And then finally, because up until now absolutely no value has been realized, use, value, realization, and then you get the, get the loop. If, and just think about this in your organization. If you think that the weakest link is on the business side, help your business partners to, to improve their, um, their roles and responsibilities. And the, the foundation that I represent has guidance specifically on this, on this left-hand side. We call it our BSL model, which is there. I'm not going to go into it. But it addresses the the stuff on the left-hand side, which is just as important as the stuff on the, on the right-hand side. So see DevOps as part of the, the bigger value chain, focus on the weakest link, and co-create value with the business. Third part, quickly, a little bit on the troubled relationship between business people and IT people. You know, I, I don't know why, but business people think we're weird. So what do you think they think about us? What do business people say about IT people? Antisocial, certainly. That's what my, what, what my wife says. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Detached. These are things that other people have said at conferences, bureaucratic and slow, speaking techno babble. We can't under they think they know what we want, but they don't have a clue what we need. And despite the fact that service desks are usually presented in this attractive way, this is what the users fear. <laughs> it's the last people you want to call often if you've got a technical problem. Now let's look, look at it the other way around. Business people can be a little bit weird too. So, what um, what do IT people think? IT people think about business people. Sorry, say it again. Bureau Bureau bureaucratic, useless, useless. <laughs> stupid requirements. Don't know what they want, always changing their mind, won't take responsibility, never, it's simply not fair. And we're back to the toilet theme here as well, I think, with business and IT, that's just the way things are organized. It, you know, you just got to realize, you take, you, you've got to talk to each other about these kind of things. And this is where I've done some research. I'm just leaving you with a link to the research and this slide, which I'm not going to deal with. Think about the kind of desired behavior that you'd like to see from business and from IT in order to collaborate quicker, better. Final part, just a couple of minutes on, um, on fun. Um... Alex talked about effectiveness and efficiency. I like to use the word energizing. Whenever you do something in your IT department, think, is it going to make life easier for the users? Is it going to be more effective? Is it going to be more efficient for your department? But is it going to be more energizing for the individuals who actually do the work? And I'm referring here to something. Daniel Pink, anybody seen this stuff? Dan Pink, a couple of people. Yep, small number of people. He talks about autonomy, mastery, and purpose as being three things that really improve how you feel at work, but also your performance. Autonomy is how much room you have to take your own decisions. Mastery is doing your work better and better and better each time, which gives you satisfaction. And purpose is realizing the goal at the end of the chain, that you're making a difference for somebody, for the customer. Now, probably the last person you expected to encounter at a DevOps conference is, uh, is, is the Dalai Lama. 
I've, I've asked him to, to answer a simple question. What is the meaning of life? Meaning of life, I consider the happiness and the usefulness is the purpose of our life, meaning of our life. The very existence of our life is surely not for trouble, not for suffering. Now, those two words, happiness and usefulness, really grab me as being the, the core values that I've adopted. And I've adopted these seriously. I've adopted these as, as guiding principles. I consciously make decisions. Is this going to make me happy? Is this going to make me useful? If it doesn't, I don't do it. So I've adopted these as, as values. And referring back to Martin, principles and values, these are pretty deep values with me. You can see this reflected in my, in my what I call my visual CV. You've got a simple graph with an X. Sorry. I think we've run out of time. I think I think that was <laughs> I, I think I think that was a I think that was a that was a sign for, a sign from above. <laughs> I can I can finish it off without the um, without the slides. I'd like to leave you. I'd like to leave you with an ancient DevOps proverb. It's two and a half thousand years old. And I think, I think the Dalai Lama would approve because it's, uh, it's, it's very, very zen. Pain is inevitable in life as in DevOps. Suffering is optional. It's your attitude, dude. It's how you see things. It's not what you look at, it's, how, it's what you see. Be happy, be useful. Thank you for being here. Thank yourself for being you. Thank you very much.